North Highlands Baptist. It is so good to have you join us in worship today. Alrighty, my name is Brother. These are your weekly announcements. First things first is Tablescapes. Tablescapes is finally here. This is for ladies ages 12 and up, and if you don't have a ticket, you need to get a ticket today. Tickets will be on sale in the atrium right after church services. They're only $15. Grab your ticket, grab a ticket for a friend. It's gonna be an incredible event for our ladies this weekend. Coming up next Sunday afternoon is our Trento, Italy mission trip interest meeting. So if you are interested in the mission trip, you need to be at this meeting. It's at 5 p.m. next Sunday afternoon. Jeff is gonna go over the details for the trip. So if you are interested, this is not committing to the mission trip, but hey, there are limited spots on this trip. But if you're interested, be here next Sunday at 5 p.m. And wrapping up announcements this week, I want to invite you to Wednesday nights if you're not already coming. Wednesday nights we have something for everyone and I mean everyone. For our preschool kids, we've got mission friends. For children's age, we've got team kids. For students, we've got cross training. And for adults, we've got Sunday worship. All of this is happening at 6 p.m. on Wednesday nights. We would love to have you here, so come join us this Wednesday, 6 p.m. Alrighty, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Once again, I want to say thank you for joining us in worship. And if this is your first time, welcome. It's so good to see you. And hey, if you've been here for years, it's so good to see you again. But alrighty, it's time to throw this over to my buddy, Michael. So Michael, take it away. All right. Thank you, Josh. Good morning. Good to see you guys today. I'm excited about this time of worship that we have. Um, I do want to invite all of you to come back and join us on Wednesday for one reason is um, we're going to be doing some special things for our fire firefighters, a way to um, share, share with them how much we love and appreciate them. Of course, we uh, know today is 9-11. It is a day to remember uh, what uh, many of our first responders have done and the sacrifices that they make for us. And so as a church family, we want to tell them thank you. And, uh, and so Wednesday night, we'll have a couple of projects that uh, our kids and students and adults can be with, uh, get involved in and help us to show our appreciation to them. So look forward to seeing you then. But I'm so glad you guys are here today. Uh, what a blessing it is to uh, worship the Lord together. And I want to give a special welcome to the Hueytown High School football team. We are glad you're here today. <laughs> Thank you guys for getting up early and coming to join us at North Highlands. Uh, we are so grateful for you. And uh, I'm so, I'm, I'm a, a, a color guard band dad. And so I get to follow you guys around. And I want you to know on behalf of our community how much fun it is to, to watch you guys play. And so we love you and appreciate what you do for our community. And I also want to let you know in front of everybody, outside of maybe your parents, um, there's some men up here that love you more than anything. These Your coaches, Coach Patterson, thank you so much for being here and bringing your staff with you. Uh, and they they really care about you. And so uh, I wanna know, I'm, I'm grateful for you. And on many levels, uh, when I think it's tough being a pastor, I go out on a Friday night and watch a coach. And there's no other job uh, that just random community members can stand up and give you their immediate performance evaluations to you. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you don't do that to me. <laughs> that was a dumb point. <laughs> Have you ever read the Bible? <laughs> so I... I you, you make me feel better. We have, we have t shared a little bit, and th you know, there's lots of commonalities between our jobs. Uh, one thing that you do have that I don't have is I've seen you get to yell at your congregation. So I'm thinking about picking that up. I, I, it's, it's coming to some of you. Get you by the face mask and <clears throat> a little discipleship. We'll call it that. All right. All right. Have y'all ever been yelled at by coach? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. 
That's very, very respectful. All right. Well, these guys love you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we really are honored that you are here to worship the Lord with us. And all of you, we're glad you're here today. If, if you are a guest of ours today, thank you for choosing to join us at North Highlands. Uh, in the seat in front of you, there is a card. It looks something like this, a Connect card. Uh, if you have any questions, um, any, anything you'd like to, us to know, any um, uh prayer request that you might have for us, please fill this out. You can leave it in the seat right where you are or put it in the offering plates at the doors when we leave today. We'd love to know that you are here and, and be able to pray for you and answer any questions that you might have, but we're, we're just, we're, we are glad that you're here today, especially you guys and uh, on this special day to worship the Lord. So let, let's, let's begin our time of worship uh, praying to the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to gather together today. And uh, we just begin this morning saying you are great and you are awesome and you are worthy of all of our praise. And so, Lord, today I pray, God, that we just won't have a good time together, that we won't hear good things, but that we will really experience you. Uh, God, we know that you love us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. And so in response to that, God, we want to give you all of our lives, all of our worship, everything that we have. You deserve that. So, Lord, we pray that as we lift up the name of Jesus together that you will draw us to yourself. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand for worship this morning.
Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. join together in prayer Lord we pause this moment this morning to recognize you and who you are you are God you rule and you reign over all things God we praise you today that you do make ways where there are no ways that you have made it possible for us to have a relationship with you. You've made it possible for us to find meaning and purpose in what seems like a meaningless world. God, you have spoken to us, and we confess today that we cannot come to you on our own, but we praise you that you've made a way because you came to us. Father, that you put on flesh and dwelt among us, came to be with us through Jesus And we pray today in his name for his glory. Amen. Amen. So what is the meaning of life? That's, That's a big question that people all over the world, throughout all generations, including most of us, at least sometime in our lives, that we will try to wrestle with what is the meaning of life. Why are we here? What's it all about? It's a question Solomon seeks to answer in um, the book that he wrote in the Bible, a book, one of his books uh, called Ecclesiastes. And so the last few weeks we've been talking about through that book, and we're going to finish that up today just in a, for a few moments. Uh, so if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, if you don't have your Bibles, that's fantastic. You look on uh, a Bible app or it'll be on, on the, the screen as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. If you're looking through your Bibles, uh, right in the middle of your Bible, you should be able to find Psalms, a pretty big book, and then turn to write two books, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. And we're going to read just a couple of verses from this last chapter in just a moment. But what is the meaning of life? Why, why are we here? Solomon is uniquely qualified to answer this question for us. For one reason is he was given by God supernatural wisdom and knowledge, but also through uh, experiences of his life that he writes this looking back on his life where he, he quite literally pursued every avenue of life that you could try to find meaning and purpose and satisfaction. If it's something that you feel like you want to do, that you want to find out in life, I can guarantee you Solomon, he did that. He's been there. He's done that. So whatever your measure of success, and we could say several different things of what it means to be successful. Whatever your measure of success, uh, Solomon had experienced that. He achieved it. For one thing, he was king. He was king of Israel. Um, He was successful in business. He built a strong military. He built the temple of God in Jerusalem, which for generations is where people would go to worship God. Actually, during this time in history that we read about in the Bible, it's literally where the presence of God dwelt, in this temple that, that Solomon built. He was successful in so many different kind of ways. Some of you may want to be famous. You want to make a name for yourself. You want to be known. You want to be remembered. Solomon was famous. People would literally come from all over the world just to come and hear him speak and just to see what he had done. He, he achieved worldwide fame during this time, and yet he acknowledges in this book, Ecclesiastes 9.5, looking back, he says to us, listen, we're all going to die, and even your name will be forgotten. Just think about the billions and billions of people that have lived on planet earth many of them wanting to be somebody wanting to experience fame and to be known and yet most of them have already been forgotten even people that have lived recently 
he lived life of fame. If, if, if success meaning pleasure for you means relationships, maybe it's women, sex, pleasure. Listen, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had 1,000 women. And yet, his conclusion in this book, Ecclesiastes 9.9, was this. Hey, guys, enjoy life with your wife all the days of your life. He told his son, writing in Proverbs, rejoice in the wife of your youth. Listen, Solomon had all kinds of women, but looking back on it, he said, listen, just stay faithful to your wife. His experience was many of those women drew his heart away from the Lord, that which was and should have been most important to him. Solomon experienced fame, he experienced relationships and pleasure and women, but maybe you say, hey, I want to work hard, I want to go to school, maybe I want to play a sport, I want to be successful in business so I can make a lot of money. Certainly that is an avenue that many people pursue, that if I could just have enough, if I could be wealthy enough, then I would find meaning, then life would be good. Is that what we're living for? Certainly what the American dream is pushing us towards. Some of you guys, I mean, we see his signs. We're very grateful for the impact he's had on our community. But you see Jameis. I mean, you remember seeing him play as a kid. And, like, maybe we could follow in his footsteps. And I'm sure that some of you said, so, all right, so I, go for it, man. I, I, hope, I hope you make it. I hope you have success in this area. But I'm, don't go for Jameis money. Go for Tom Brady money. Go for Peyton Manning money. They're the richest football players around. Both of them, I don't know who has more, but both of them what I found, both of them are worth $250 million. That's, that's, that's quite a career, isn't it? So work hard. Listen to these coaches. They'll get you there. $250 million. Solomon was worth 8,000 times that much. He was worth, according to estimates, over $2 trillion, which would make him the richest person that's ever lived. If you want to live for money, Solomon did that. He had more literally than anybody that's ever lived to our knowledge. He had achieved that, but listen to what he said. Ecclesiastes 5.10, looking back on his life, he says, Whoever loves money never has enough. Now, if $2 trillion is not enough, <laughs> I think we might need to look for a different place to find our satisfaction, right? fact we hear words like you can't take it with you right why should we not live for money and stuff because you can't take it with you anybody ever heard that before all right that came from Solomon in this book that was his wisdom through his supernatural wisdom and his experience in life and so here he is in this kind of strange book bringing us all together like we're in class and he's teaching us from his knowledge, his wisdom, and his personal experience. And so here, this teacher's last words in, in uh, chapter 12 are actually the same words that he start, started with in the beginning. Ecclesiastes 12.8 says this. Looking back on his life, Solomon said, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Chapter 1, he continued, verse 14. That he said, I've seen all the things that are done under the sun or uh, under the heavens, and all of them are meaningless, a, a chasing after the wind. And somehow most of us know this, that instinctively down in our, in our hearts and our souls, we know there has to be more than this. Because whatever we are pursuing for pleasure and meaning and satisfaction and purpose, I, I, I can just about guarantee you that the more we pursue it, the more we realize it's not really giving me what I thought. It's not giving me what I thought I needed. Ecclesiastes 3.11, Solomon explains this because he says, God has set eternity in our hearts. You see, we weren't meant just to live this life on earth, this 70, 80, 90, 100 years. God has created us for more than this, and in our hearts, we know that. He said eternity in our hearts. And so he brings this conclusion to the book. You won't find any meaning in anything under the sun, any of those pursuits, knowledge or success or 
relationships or money or any of those things. You won't find meaning in anything under this, the heavens because you'll only find meaning in the heavens. You'll only find meaning and purpose and satisfaction in the God that created you to have a relationship with himself. Looking back on his own experience, his own life, Solomon wraps up this book in two verses. The last two verses of this book is what I want us to read together. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14 says this. Now all has been heard, and here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or it's evil. The end. All has been heard. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Everything's been said and done. And here's the bottom line. Here's what... Life boils down to, according to Solomon, as he looks back on what he's experienced. Here's what life is all about. Here's what it boils down to. Here's what we should focus on if we want to find meaning in this meaningless world. Two things. Fear God and keep his commandments. Solomon would say to us, I've tried everything else. I've been there and done that. He would want to say to these young men, listen to me, listen to my wisdom. I've been where you want to go. Two things. Fear God, keep his commandments. In fact, the first verse of of this chapter, he says this, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Whoever is listening here today that, th- that thinks, I- I- I'll take God seriously sometime in the future, and I'm not just talking about you students because I know there's adults that are thinking the same thing. You got kids, I got to focus on my kids. I got work, I got to focus on my work. One day I'll be, no, no. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator right now. Fear God and keep his commandments this is the duty of all mankind he says it's not just for some people it's for all people fear God and when we hear that it sounds kind of a little bit strange initially because it's like are, are we supposed to be like shaking in our boots afraid of what God's going to do no, not necessarily it's not like we're afraid that he's waiting on us to mess up so he can strike us with a bolt of lightning or something like that we say fear God it's 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 more like recognizing God for who he is. That he is holy and righteous and just. He's perfect. He is sovereign. He is God. And for us to say that we fear him is that we recognize God for for who he is and, and we take him seriously. Saying this, that there is a God Can can we all give an amen to that? There is a God, and I am not him. And you're not him. We recognize him for who he is, and we take him seriously, and we put God in his proper place. As a result, when we put God in his proper place, we will put ourselves in our proper place. Now, uh, I know this is important for you. At, at the basic level, one of the most important things about playing football is being in the right position, right? Is being in the right position where you're supposed to do, be, where you can accomplish the job that you were sent to do. Now, if you are not in your right position as a football player, that's going to be bad news every time, isn't it? Bad things are going to happen. Things aren't going to work out as the coaches have designed it for you. And it's that way in life. Listen, life is this. We put ourselves in our right position. We put God in his right position. We recognize who he is. We take him seriously and we put him in his proper place. Fearing God is this. It says that you are God and I am not. And therefore, if we really believe that, saying, I will adjust my life to you. If there is a God that is ruling and reigning over all things, we've got to put him in his proper place and put ourselves in the proper place. 
logical next step to that is this. You fear God, and secondly, obey his commands. Solomon said it all boils down to this. Fear God, put him in his right place, recognize him for who he is, and then obey his commands. It's a logical step. Saying, God, I will do whatever you want me to do. You're God. And I exist for you. God doesn't exist for us. Not, sometimes, we treat it, we, sometimes we treat God like he's Santa Claus or something. That he's there for us. That if we'll be good boys and good girls, he'll give us what we need, right? We'll just sit on his lap and ask him for things, and he'll, he'll give us what we need. Listen, Santa Claus isn't affecting my life today, right? Because he exists for me. And a lot of times we think that God's like that. He does not exist for us. We exist for him. You'll never find meaning and purpose outside of understanding this. Outside the will of God. So I want to say to all of us, don't waste your life. I'm looking at grandparents and senior adults. Don't waste your life. I'm looking at adults, middle-aged and young adults and parents. Don't waste your life. I'm looking at students and kids. Don't waste your life. Take it from Solomon. And take it from many of us who have been there and done that. Today we are blessed to have someone come and share with us. Is, is, he, is he ready? We good? Cool, awesome. Seeing thumbs up. Fantastic. We're blessed to have someone that's come all the way from uh, Georgia to be with us today. El Toro Freeman may be known um, to uh, many of us as a standout who played for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, he was actually part of the championship team in um, in 2010, and so he's achieved what many of you guys would like to achieve. Also, he's the CEO of Reputation on the Line, which recognizes outstanding students for their character on and off the field. He's an accomplished entrepreneur, but most of all, he is a man that has dedicated his life to helping people follow Jesus. And so, would you please give a big North Highlands, Hueytown, Alabama, welcome to El Toro Freeman. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you, thank you, yes, yes sir. sir. Hey, hey, how are we doing today? Good, good. Come on, let's see. I'm gonna be a little more excited. But we're in the house of the Lord. How are we doing today? That's what I'm talking about. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, I'm just gonna start off by uh, talking about myself for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna get into the good stuff. You know. Uh, so start with myself. Uh, I was born and raised in Alexander City, Alabama. Uh, at an early age, uh, I developed a strong passion and love. For the game of football uh, wasn't able to play um, as, as a youth you know uh, due to finances uh, you know mom you know she was gonna send those whatever the fee may be towards the light bill or water bill you know how I go but uh, I got uh, an opportunity to play uh, in middle school and so uh, I had the talent had the ability all that good stuff but I was kind of behind you know my teammates and so, uh, but I, I worked really hard. I worked extremely hard, actually. And so, uh, I worked so hard where by the time I was in high school, I was the top player in the state and one of the top players in the country. And um, I had accumulated over uh, 30 scholarship offers from D1 schools. And so, uh, that just come totally from my hard work and dedication that I put in it. And um, I went on and had the opportunity to, uh, to go play at Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, community college, and there we won the national championship. So I've been a part of two national championship teams. And um, after junior college, I went on to Auburn University. And this is when it good stuff. And this is when it get really good. This is when it get really good because I'm about to talk about somebody that uh, I hope we all have in our lives. And I want, I'm going to talk about somebody that uh, you all may know, but I really want you to establish a relationship today if you haven't already because it's going to make all the difference in your life. So uh, I go to Auburn University, and man, like I say, man, I, uh, I always had a dream to be a professional football player. That was my, that was my thing, you know, uh, and 
I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm this, after this, 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 I mean, I'm going to live out the dream. Like, this is, uh, this, this is looking really good right now. So uh, I leave junior college as the number one rated outside linebacker in the country, you know. And so uh, I'm going into Auburn, and I have high expectations for myself. And uh, starting out, the expectations at the time I thought was high, but when, actually when I got there and I started playing, I was like, man, I, I probably need to up my expectations a little bit. So the expectations were, of course, you know, I wanted to become a starter. I wanted to be the strongest linebacker, all the things of that nature. But w- once I got there, I realized that those uh, goals, I was already pretty much it, you know, and uh, was kind of like the strongest, and I could, uh, could, could, I could compete with the players that I was actually watching a year before on, t- on t- national TV. And it blew me away. I was like, wow, you know, man, this, this may not be as hard or, or as challenging as I, may, as I thought, you know. And so then the mindset kind of changed, you know, as far as like, you know what, you know, I, I think I'm going to start. You know, I, 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 I want to be, be the Buckets Award winner. I want to be the best linebacker in the country. And I got so consumed with my goals and what I wanted to do. And I emphasize I, you know what I mean, because uh, that led me away from him without me even realizing it. So, and I'm going to back back just a little bit. My mom and my dad, they embedded God in the household within me. You know, that, that, that was a major deal in our household in education, you know. And so uh, I'm so proud of that because the seed was planted in me, you know. And so I, and I, and I, and I just had a conversation with her the other night, and I was telling her that. I was like, Mom, I, just, I really appreciate that. And now that I have children... I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to plant that seed of God in their life because I know it's going to make all the difference. So back to I with these expectations and these goals, and I'm like, you know what? This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. But then all of a sudden, something that I knew how to do better than anything in life, if, even if I'm having any type of adversity within life, I, always, this is always, I could always run to this. You know what I mean? This, this was my scapegoat from everything that was happening in life. You know, whether I'm going to just work out more or whatever the case may be to, uh, better my, to, to make myself better at my craft. And uh, I always run to it. But this was the first time in my life that I faced adversity with something that I knew how to do just like at a blink of an eye. And it was so crazy because it wasn't about, you know, is he strong enough? Could he compete? Uh, is he fast enough? Is, 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 the, game, is the transition hard? It, it wasn't about none of that because I became an instant starter once I came to Auburn, like once I got to Auburn. And uh, as time went on, I tried to fight a lot of battles alone. I tried to fight a lot of battles alone. And I, put, I, and I, and I carried that weight. And as I carried that weight on myself, and I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. I start noticing, you know, that I wasn't where I wanted to be. And the people around me, like my friends and things of that nature, they start to turn their shoulders away from me. And that hurted me the most. And now I'm starting to pay attention to more distractions than my, actually, my actual mission and my goals in life. So I'm going to break it down because I know we got some football players in the building. So I'm going to break it down to you, man. So, you know, you all, you guys, you all, you guys have goals. And, and every, each and every one of you want to be the best at what you do. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's the focus. That's the mission. You know what I mean? You want to be the best player, your best teammate. You want to win a state championship, all that good stuff. You want to earn a scholarship and all that. And that's great. But, some along, but sometimes along the way we get distracted. You know, whether it's uh, outside distractions, close, for whatever the case may be, we get distracted. And that's what happened to me. I ended up getting distracted on the mission. And I started to look at, uh, and I was okay. I, I, I was okay, but 
I, I wasn't really fulfilling the expectations that the world had of me coming to all. So now, you know, I used to always run to the, to, to, the, to the articles, and, you know, I used to always call my friends up. Man, how I do, man? I'm going to get 10 tackles this game. You know, I was all consumed within myself. And, boy, when things wasn't going right, things started to get a little rocky. And I went back to those same sources. And when things weren't pretty, then I didn't get the feedback that I needed, you know. So then and I'm, I'm watching the articles, I'm, 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 I'm listening to my friends and things of that nature, and it wasn't really the feedback that I needed, and it, was, it, was discour- it discouraged me. And so, uh, but I thought I could fix it. Once again, I, I thought I can get it done. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to work a little harder. I'm going to get in the gym. You know, I'm, I'm going to watch more film. I'm going to get it done. Still consumed with that. Well, going into my senior year, I think we won a national championship and all that good stuff. Going into my senior year, about the third game in my senior year, I was in my apartment, and I looked myself in the mirror, and I broke down instantly. I broke down. And this is why I'm so proud of my parents about planting that seed in me. Because I didn't go to alcohol, I didn't go to drugs or anything like that. I went to God. I went to God. That's why it's important that we establish the relationship. That's why it's important, right, right there. Because this moment right here, I'm, and you guys, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some stats to you. All right, I was over 450 pounds, bent press, 500 pound squat. I mean, I got it all, man. Four, five, forty. I mean, forty, a thirty-eight inch vertical. I mean, you, I, I got, I, I got it all. So I thought, but that could not fix the situation, fix the problem. And I tried, and the more I tried alone, the more frustrated I got, the more sad I got. You know, and then it comes to a point where, you know, your mom is always there, your dad is always there to give you that support. But their words wasn't healing for me. It didn't, it didn't heal me. You know, it was just like the same old, like, you know, you know, El Toro, it, it's going to be all right. Or, you know, just, just keep working hard. It's going to get better. But it, 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 it wasn't enough. It, it wasn't helping me. And so I broke down in my, uh, in my apartment bathroom. And I was like, man, you know what? I, gotta, I, I, I just instantly start talking to God. I'm like, God, I need you, man. Like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, uh, my career, it wasn't consistent at all. I'm always, like, it's always a little nagging injury. Or it's just always something that just kept me from the game. Always. You know, it wasn't consistent. And I never had this problem before. And so uh, that night, man, it, it changed my life. And I got down, and I, and, and I had this conversation with God, and I just started. I got on YouTube because I was trying to find some, just some motivational phrases, motivational words, just to, you know, get my spirit up. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you, you got this, man, you know? And as I was doing that, man, I came across a video that changed my life forever. And I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to show that to y'all today. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it before I... Uh, before I ask to, 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 for it to be put on. When I'm watching this video, I'm watching a man that was on a mission. His name is Jesus, by the way. He was on a mission. And as he on his mission, I'm watching all of the distractions that's in his way. You have one of his disciples, who don't walk with him, who don't saw his, saw his greatness. He's right there beside him. Seeing his greatness. And then he gives him up. For silver. Then, you got a guy 
by the name of Peter, knows him well. Walk with him. Cried with him. Everything. And denied. Three times. So I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. But you know what this man didn't do? He didn't allow the distractions to become bigger than his mission. He didn't allow the distractions to become bigger than his mission. And I was so moved by that because I found myself allowing the distractions to become bigger than the mission. And I'm, and I'm watching this man take a beat, just completely just, I mean, humiliated. They laughing at him. That's how I felt too. Now, what I went through doesn't compare to near what he endured now. Make no mistake about it. I'm not trying to compare it. But this video right here, it just made me think, like, wow. Because I, when, when, when I miss tackles, or whatever the case may be, and I, lead a ta I, I, I play the game and get no tackles, you know, I was getting laughed at. People start, start doubting me. Oh, he ain't what he's supposed to, you know. Oh, he's just hype. I felt that. The people that have uh, that been knowing me since day one know how hard I work, know the passion, know the love I have for the game. Soon adversity strikes, what they do? Oh, he's crazy. I don't know what's wrong with him. He done lost his mind. Really? So I'm watching this and I'm reflecting on my, I'm like, wow, man. And, I, and, and mind you now, when I first, cause you, when you see this video, you know, the first thing you may come to, that may come to mind or, 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 or the feeling may come to you, you may begin to be sad. You may be a little angry. You may don't even have to understand it. Like, why, why, well, th this is wrong. Like, why are they doing this? Because that's where I was. Until about the, 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 the 19th or 20th consecutive, consecutive time of rewatching the video. The more I watched the video, the more I developed the understanding of what was going on. And I'm watching this guy. And the thing that motivated me the most in this video, when he was beat down to his knees, to our severely beat, beaten down to his knees, and he's shaking to stand back up again. Man. I said, wow. That moment, that moment, I prayed to God. I said, God, I'm not the best motivational speaker. God, you know, I, I didn't even want to read a paragraph in front of the class out the textbook. Don't call on me. I don't. But I said, God, I promise you this right here, man. What you have shown me today, if you can help me, if you can push me through and give me my passion back, give me my love back, help me to ignore these distractions that's in my way. It's not about how many tackles I make, because it's not about me anymore. God, just give me the love back for the game. Help me to remember the blessing. Help me to remember the opportunity that I have that many may not. What about those little things right there, which are big? Put me in an environment where success is a norm. What about those things, El Toro? We ain't talking about the NFL. We're talking about you at Auburn getting a free education. And I'm speaking on these things, guys, because I see you all in front of me, and I want you to remember something, man. I know some of y'all, everybody want to be a starter, and everybody want to be the star, but guess what? It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. But don't you dare let that 
discourage you? Keep you from working hard? Keeping you from believing in yourself? Don't do that. And don't you dare allow it to make you be a bad teammate. Begin to be selfish. Power, things of that nature. Because it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. When you step on that football field, you represent that name on the front of your jersey, man, and the name on the back. And I don't care what this community may have been going through. I don't care what they may have been going through. On Friday night, you get them joy and happiness. Don't you forget that. And it's your responsibility to be the example for the underclassmen. Don't ever forget that. It's not about the scoreboard. Forget the scoreboard. The coach is going to take care of that. I promise you. They're going to figure that out. They're going to figure that part out. I want you to fall in love with working together as a team for something great. I want you to focus on break, look, looking at the community come and support you. I want you to focus on no matter what your mom may be going through, no matter what your dad may be going through, that night, man, all that is put to the side and they come in and watch their baby. That's what it's all about, man. Embrace the lessons. Embrace the lessons. Adversity gonna happen. But you can't be distracted. You cannot be distracted. And you don't let no, you don't, let, you don't allow anything to take your joy or your love away from the game. Or anything that you're doing in life. I'm gonna go back to the video. I wanted to share that with you. This guy here, once again, by the name of Jesus, he did not allow the distractions to become bigger than his mission. So when you all watch this video right here, don't be sad. Don't be angry. Because he's the example on how to handle yourself when these things come about. Because they're going to come. And it's going, to be a, it's going to be a time that mom is not going to be able to help you. They're going to show Mary in the movie. She was there. She was there watching. But all she could do is watch. It's going to come a time in your life. Your mom, your dad, your brother. Their information may not be healing. It may not be fulfilling. That's why it's important, once again, to establish the relationship. I'm going to say that a lot throughout my speech. Because we've got to do more than just know about it. You've got to establish a relationship. Uh, if you can play that clip for me real quick. I don't know what we're going to air there. Right? Okay, here we go. God did nothing wrong. I'm going to try not to get emotional, but, you know, every time I watch this and I reflect about what he's done for me, it, it gets me a little emotional. But I'm, I'm going to try to stay strong through this. You got to know he got all powers in his hand. At any given time, he can stop what's going on. He has that ability. But that's not part of his mission. His mission is so much bigger than a distraction. I want you to know something. If any time he became selfish, we would have had the opportunity of life right now that we have.
got all powers in his hand right now. He can stop whatever's going on, whatever's going on. He way stronger than me. He way, he, 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 he way, he more powerful than me. He can stop whatever's going on right now. But he did not allow the distractions to become bigger than his mission. Changed my life. And it started about the, uh, the sixth game of the season. See, the beginning of my senior year, a lot of people, they'd be blown away by this, but I wasn't a starter. The first, for the first six games of my senior year, I wasn't a starter. I was playing backup by underclassmen. And this, and, and this helped the, the, the highly rated El Toro Freeman. But after watching that, I say, Father God, it don't matter. I play one snap, 20 snap, start, don't start, it don't matter. I'm going to love the game. I'm going to be a great teammate. I'm going gonna, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you the praise. I'm, 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 I'm going to just love every moment of this. But about the end of the season, let's play that last clip. This is what happened. And I ain't had nothing to do with it. Chris Davis looks like he might be coming from the corner. He's not. He's just been contained. And here is Richardson. Yeah. What a player. El Toro Freeman. El Toro Freeman has changed this defense for Auburn. That's all God, man. That moment right there was more bigger than me getting called to be the first round draft pick. Because I knew what I went through. But the most important part about what I went through is that it helped me to even understand that you can't do this by yourself. And it allowed me to see the greatness of God. This is how he came to me in the game of football. So I, this is what he done. He, he may come at you all in different ways. I mean, I mean, you know, God is he's amazing now. He's amazing. But to hear that announcer say, El Toro Freeman has changed his defense, and once again, it's not about me. That's all God. That's all God. I couldn't do it. I tried it. I tried really hard. I tell you, I, I really, really tried hard at it. Couldn't do it. So I'm glad you all in the audience tonight, especially you guys. I'm glad everyone's here, but especially the, the, our youth here. Because I want you to take this message. I don't want it only move you. You know, when you, when you, when you get someone come in, they speak, and, and they do a great job speaking, and they just move you at all of a sudden. You're like, whoa, man, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to go. But then like a week later or two weeks later and three weeks, a month, and a year, you kind of forget about what really was talked about. I don't want that to happen today. And I pray that this message I'm delivering to you don't only have an impact for the day but for a lifetime. And if you can remember this, if, if, if you don't remember anything else I say today, I want you to remember this. It's vital to establish a relationship with God. It's vital. After Auburn, I got uh, opportunities in the NFL, went into camp with the Green Bay Packers, and also with the Baltimore Ravens. But when I went to, the, when I, when I went to Green Bay, and I remember stepping foot on Lambeau Field. And by the way, I, I got to share this too. When I was in the fourth grade, my first football pitcher was a Brett Favre. He played for the Green Bay Packers. I was thinking, like, fourth grade, I got it at the book fair. It's fourth grade. My first football pitcher was Brett Favre. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm telling God, trip you out. The first NFL team I went to was the Green Bay Packers. How about that? How about that? And then, like I say, I ended up getting picked up by uh, Baltimore Ravens. I went to the Ravens. Uh, my career at the Ravens was cut short in camp due to injury. So uh, I ended up going back home, going home, 
and I started uh, teaching at my, our local middle school and coaching football at my local middle school. And everyone was asking me, like, uh, man, you know, Toro, because they, they, you know, the people that knew me in the community, it was like, man, are you, you okay? Even my parents, especially my dad, kind of worried about me. It's like, man, you, you, know, you doing all right, man? How, how you holding up, man? You know? I'm like, I'm good, dad. I'm everything good, you know? People ask, what's good? Because they knew the passion and love that I had for the game. They knew. And so, but they didn't know what I already done discovered, though. See, 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 before this moment, I was living in my passion. I was living in it. But that day helped me to figure out what most important, and I discovered my purpose. We all have a purpose. No one here by a mistake. We all have a purpose. And my purpose is to, is to inspire and motivate. I discovered that. So uh, I, was, I was okay. Now, I still felt like I had some more plan left in me. Now, I, I still, you know, was, was training and, 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 and trying to find other opportunities to, to get back in the league. Uh, had a few workouts with some NFL teams, never did get picked back up. Uh, but three years later, in 2015, um, I was working, I was still working with the school, and I also I picked up a night job. I was working at night as well. And uh, I got an unexpected phone call from the coach of the CFL. It was unexpected. Answered the phone. I was at work early Saturday morning. I answered the phone. He said, hey, El Toro, this is Coach Chamberlain for the Sketch with the sketch One Rough Rider. He said, man, look, I'm sitting here watching your tape. Man, I really like your reputation at the linebacker position. He said, man, I know you've been out for a couple of years, Arturo, but I still believe that you got some more football left in you to play. He said, man, look, this is what we're going to do, man. He said, man, we got a trial set up in Birmingham, Alabama. He said, man, how far years from there? I said, about, a, about an hour and a half. I was in Alex City at the time. I said, about an hour and a half. He, he said, man, look, in January, we got this trial, man. We're going to see if, you know, if you test well, man, we will we'll get you signed, and, man, we'll bring you on up to Canada. How you, how you feel about that? I said, coach, I love it. You know, I like, man, I love the opportunity. Let's do it. And so uh, it's another gift that God gave me. So I, I went home, and, you know, I was sharing it with my circle, and I'm pumped up about it. I'm like, man, you know, yeah, this is going to be a great opportunity right here. This is going to be awesome, man. You know, so I started, you know, working out and things of that nature. And, um, you know, my brother, he was always checking with me, see how things was going, see how the workout was going. And, 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 I, and I, I shared the conversation with him that me and the coach had had. And he said, man, bro, this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to make this thing really simple. He said, all we're going to do is we're going to upkeep the reputation that the coach liked. That's all we're going to do. I said, okay, cool. So it ain't, there ain't no need for you to, you know, get, uh, get, get, get too excited. or what. We just going to keep up, keep the reputation. That's too easy, right? Like, yeah, bro, that, that's too easy. I said, okay, cool. So then I went to go get a shirt made, so reputation on the line. R-O-T-L, reputation on the line. That was just totally my motivation, you know, after working and things of that nature, is give me the extra push to go and work out, go and do the things I need to do to prepare for this opportunity. Well, I end up going to, uh, I end up going to Birmingham and I killed the, the workout. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I killed it. I got signed that day to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Uh, I end up going to, uh, going to Canada and I end up replacing a guy that had left for the NFL. And so, uh, but long story short, he ended up coming back on the team. So some, they had to move some pieces around. I ended up getting released. I came back home and uh, the reputation on the line, it, it, it was just, just picking up. Like people were literally, like everyone, like b before I started the reputation on the line deal, everyone used to call me the bull. You know, they are now, hey bull, what's up man? You know, do the football. But then it translated into ROTL. Mr. ROTL, hey, man, you got a shirt? Hey, and, and I, I would just get this, you know what I mean? It's all the time. And so long story short, I fast forward, and I, now that, that ROTL, that, the T-shirt now is, is now a company, you know what I mean? And so, uh, and, and it's a gift from God because ROTL, if you add an E at the end of the L and an O before the R, 
it spells El Toro backwards. How cool is that? It spells El Toro backwards. Wow. We have currently have four divisions right now. Uh, the division that, uh, that I just, I love all the divisions, but the division that I just love the most is the Reputation on the Line Awards division. And it's a sponsor-driven division. We go out there, we, we get sponsors to advertise through our program and also uh, give the, give the uh, businesses or uh, sponsors an opportunity to also give back and shine light onto the student athletes in the community that's doing the right thing. And so uh, I award student athletes that uphold great character and work ethic, not only in their sport, but also in the classroom. So it's a character award first. And um, so that's been going really well in the areas that I'm in, in the area that I'm at. And I'm definitely planning on getting up here because I know some guys that, that definitely deserve that award. So I'm definitely going to make my way up here um, sooner than later. But uh, long story short, man, like that's, that's, that's pretty much my uh, testimony in a nutshell. Uh, again, I encourage all of you all, if you haven't, to establish a relationship with God. Totally worked out for me. Totally worked out for me. And I want to address these football players. Uh, man, um, golly, I remember sitting in your, sitting in your seat right now, man. I, I, I remember sitting in your shoes. I, I remember it, man. Uh, and as a kid, man, I used to always... Um, always envision my dream. Just always envision my dream, you know. And I come from a, a tough environment, you know, come from a pretty tough environment. Um, but my dream kept me distracted from those things. And so uh, I just want to give you, give, give you guys a moment, man. And I just want you to close your eyes. I want you just envision your dream. I don't care if it be a policeman, fireman, NFL, NBA, whatever the case may be. I just want you to sit there and just envision your dream. Envision yourself having success in your dream. Envision it. Fall in love with it, man. This is your vision. This is your vision. Whatever it may be. Open your eyes, man. This moment, I want you to make a promise. Not to mom. Not the dad, not the brother, not the sister. I want you to make a promise to yourself that you will never lose sight of it. You make that promise to yourself, you will never lose sight of it. You all know we, we, we have to be equipped to take on an opponent and take on the field. We have to be equipped to do that. Meaning, we got to have our helmet, shoulder pad, knee pad, things of that. We got to have it. I don't think y'all wear knee pads no more. Y'all tougher than, than, than back in the day. I used to have all my pads on, man. But, uh, but yeah, you, you, you have to be equipped to, 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 to take on the task, right? But you also need to be equipped in life as well. So I'm going to share with you what helped me and what is my equipment, my armor to this day. Number one. Establish a relationship with God. It's going to give you the understanding, man, along your journey. It's going to give you the understanding along your journey. Number two, it don't cost you a dime. Be a great person. Just be a great person. Don't cost you a dime. Number three, be a great student. I'm not only talking about in the classroom, even in your community. Be a great listener. Be a great student. Listen to the elders. Listen to the people who came before you. Listen. And number four, you cannot have one without the other. You got to believe in yourself and you got to work hard. You got to believe in yourself and you got to work hard. And number five, you ought to never give up. Guys, those four, those, I'm sorry, those five principles, my, my armor, my equipment has carried me a long way, man. And it's still doing it to this day. 
still doing this to this day. So, man, I really thank you all for giving me, giving me your undivided attention. Uh, you know, this, this is something that I couldn't turn down. Something, there's no way I could turn this down. I don't promote motivational speaking or promote anything about myself speaking because I don't, there's no price on this. There's no price on this because I asked God to do something for me and now I feel I'm doing something for him. I'm going to close out with a prayer. We all bow our heads. Father God, first and foremost, thank you for waking each and every one of us up this morning and allowing us all to be here in the, in the house and worship you. Father God, I ask, Father God, that you not only allow this message to be an impact for the day, but an impact for a lifetime. Father God, I thank you for all the blessings you have sent to me. I thank you for the, all the blessings you will continue to send. And Father God, I like to pray for the audience, Father God, wherever they may be sickening, wherever they may be hurting, whatever their situation may be, Father God, I ask that you come in their life and you protect them, you heal them, Father God, from the crown of their, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Father God. I pray this in your precious son Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Thank y'all. God bless you, God bless you. So, the cool thing to hear your story is, man, it's right, it's right out of what Solomon was talking about in, in Ecclesiastes is that you had success, you had the passions and the dreams that you were following, but that's not where you found your meaning and your purpose. Correct. It was in your relationship with the Lord. Correct. And, and that's, that's what we've been talking about today and all these weeks is that you were created for more than just this. You were created for eternity, and nothing makes sense until you have that relationship with God that El Toro was talking about. It won't make sense. So how do you have that? The Bible tells us that we've all sinned and fallen short of his glory. You know, we talk, Solomon said it boiled down to this, fear God and keep his commandments. The problem with that is we don't naturally fear God. We don't recognize him for who he is because we think that we are God of our lives. We, we sit on the throne of our own uh, hearts and think that we call the shots we don't naturally fear God we don't naturally keep his commandments the Bible says that we, we, we all sinned and fall short of his glory we do things our way instead of God's way the Bible also says this the wages of our sin is death or separation from God but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord the mission that El Toro, you were talking about, the mission, Jesus said this, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. What Jesus was doing when he was being crucified, when he suffered and died, is that he, he was coming to lay down his life for us, to pay the price for our sin. The most, it's, it's an amazing video to picture what, what Jesus went through for us, but, but the most amazing part of that was it just the physical things that he went to? The scripture tells us this. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us mm -hmm. so that in him we could become the righteousness of God. That when Jesus was being brutalized like that, like a few men throughout history have, the most amazing thing about that was Jesus who was perfect became sin. Everything wrong that you and I have ever done, Jesus took that on himself and he paid the price for it. He took our sin so that he could give us his righteousness. So that we could be made right with God. We could have our sins forgiven and have a relationship with God now and forever that changes our entire life. Jesus did that. God's offered Jesus as a gift to us. The question is how do we receive it? One more verse I'd like to share, and then we'll pray and close up. Romans 10, 9 says this. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Everything boils down to that. How do we find meaning in the meaningless world? How do we experience the kind of life that we're seeing and hearing that El Toro has, even through the difficulties of his life? How do we, how, it boils down to those three words, Jesus is Lord. We recognize who he is, and we submit our lives to him, follow him. I'd like for us to pray together, and actually, one more time to bow your head and close your eyes. I'm so grateful for El Toro, who's come to encourage uh, all of us, especially these students and these players. I'm grateful for his message that the most important thing is to know that you've got a relationship with God. It's how we find meaning in our lives. Because he has created us for so much more than this. He set eternity in our hearts. So right now, if you know in your heart, man, I, I, I don't have what El Toro was talking about. I'm not talking about football. I'm talking about a relationship with God through Jesus. I don't have what Scripture is talking about. I don't have that, but I know that's what I need in my life. I know that I'm a sinner separated from God, and I need a Savior. It starts today. Would you just call out to the Lord? The scripture says that everyone who calls out on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if that's the desire of your heart right now, wherever you are, if you're here today watching online, listening to this message somehow, would you just call out to God in your own heart? No magic words. He's looking at your heart today. Say, God, I, I know that I'm a sinner. I can't obey your commands. I'm not following you as God. I know that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe that Jesus is the Savior. Jesus came to this earth and he lived the perfect life that I couldn't live. And he died on the cross in my place for my sins. And he rose from the dead three days later. Lord, the best way I know how right now, I turn to you. I turn away from my sin and for living for myself. And I turn to Jesus as the Savior and the Lord, the boss, the ruler of my life. Right now, I declare for myself, Jesus is Lord. And with your help, I will follow you. I ask you to do me a favor. Nobody's looking around right now. Everybody, please keep your eyes closed. I'm not going to embarrass anybody or put anybody on the spot. Nobody's looking around but me. I just want to be able to pray for you. If right now in your own heart you've just prayed to trust Jesus as the Savior and the Lord of your life, I just want to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand up for a second? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. It all begins with a relationship with God. Lord, thank you for the truth of your good news, the gospel that will save anyone who believes. I pray for those that even today have expressed their faith in you and trusted in Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life. God, I pray that today is the first day of a life-changing relationship with you throughout the rest of their life and for all eternity. For all of us, God, I pray that you will help us to find our meaning and our purpose in you. And God, as we do that, that frees us up to enjoy all your blessings of life that you've given us. It frees us up to live out the dreams that you've placed in our heart because it's no longer about us and what we can do, but it's about you and what you've done. So I thank you for such a great reminder today through El Toro's story. And right now, Lord, we want to spend a moment in response to you. We confess in our own hearts, Jesus is Lord, and we will follow you. just a moment we're going to stand up and I invite you to respond any way that you see fit maybe if others have questions about a relationship with God through Jesus maybe you want to follow through believers baptism and publicly display your faith in Jesus maybe you want to join the church or come to the altar and pray these next few minutes before we leave are just our chance to respond to God 
and his amazing grace. Thank you for what he's done. Latour, my friend, I thank you so much for sharing with us. You hang out with us for a minute. If you guys want to come see Latour, he'll be here in a minute. But right now, let's respond to the Lord and stand up and sing to him. of God God's riches at Christ's expense what he has done for us uh, so, so grateful for uh, this moment together and time that you spent thank you for coming today thank you uh, Hewittown High School uh, football team for coming let's show our appreciation to them thank you El Toro for coming and pouring in these guys he's going to be here if any of you want to meet him or uh, uh, ask any questions or whatever. I'm sure he'd like to hang out. Um, and listen, I, we said, uh, said this a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, the the uh, football team has been gracious enough to come and join us for worship, and so I expect all of us to go out and watch, watch them. Uh, the next home game is going to be against Macadory in uh, October... 7th, October 7th, all right? But also, we got friends at the middle school. Their first uh, home game is tomorrow at 5 o'clock next door. I believe that's right. Uh, so let's go out and support them. Uh, thank you guys for coming. You're always welcome at North Highlands, but this was a, a blessing to have you here today. Love you, Coach. Thank you for what you do. Ladies, as you go out, make sure to get your tickets. It's going to be a great weekend. Tablescapes. Uh, Miss Lisa's out there. Any questions you have. God bless you guys. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday.